Portals, vortices, and the Earth's energy grid. Could Atlantis have been a giant portal? Welcome to Hunter Road Media. I'm author and ghost story and Mike Ricksecker. Explore with us. Following my appearance on the Alaska Triangle, I've received a number of questions about portals, vortices, the Earth's energy grid, ancient sites of power, and more. What are all of these things? And yes, I'm going to ask about how the lost civilization of Atlantis may have used this Earth technology. So let's start with the basics. What is a vortex? So basically a vortex is the swelling of the Earth's energy out of the core up to the surface. It's that electromagnetic power that can interfere with things in the air, on the ground, in the water, all around. This is where we get our different triangle areas, like the Alaska Triangle, the television show I was on, or the Bermuda Triangle, the Bridgewater Triangle, and all these different types of areas all over the world. Now, a vortex may not necessarily create an entire triangle area, but they do create these different swellings of electromagnetic activity that can be accessed, utilized, and can affect people and the surroundings in the land. So now, what is a portal? The terms vortex and portal are two terms that generally get interchanged a lot, but really they're two different things. So like I said, the vortex was that swelling of energy from the Earth's core. The portal is basically a doorway into another dimension or some other place in space and time. So what the portal does is actually uses that energy from the vortex to create this portal, this doorway. So the great example that was used on the television show, The Alaska Triangle, was that missing Douglas airplane in 1950. Many people speculate that it may have gotten lost into a portal because it's never been found at all. And they actually used an example of Bruce Gernon from the Bermuda Triangle where he actually flew through one of these and did successfully come out on the other side. Uh, somehow he was able to make a flight about a half an hour quicker than he usually does. He says like he got about a hundred miles in three seconds because of this tunnel he ended up flying through. Now he was successful, he got lucky, he came out on the other side, but that missing Douglas, people suspect, may have actually gotten through this portal and ended up in another place in space time or in another dimension. Now there were some radio signals, some chatter that was human, but nobody could really make out what it was. And so there is a suspicion that perhaps after the Douglas went through that portal, that the radio signals were heard coming through the other side, that we could hear it here, even though we could no longer see the airplane. And there is a bit of a premise for this. So radio waves work on a different wavelength than this electromagnetic uh, energy. And I've seen this happen in paranormal investigations with Shadow People, which is a topic I've talked about a lot here recently on Haunted Road Media because of my recent book, A Walk in the Shadows, in which there was a time that I witnessed a shadow person walking into a room that darted across the room and blew right through a door, and you could hear it, boom, slam right into that door, except the door didn't move. And this was just like a little flimsy metal door to a restaurant kitchen that waiters and waitresses would just walk through with large plates of food. So here's what I believe happened there, and I illustrate this in the book is that on its dimension, on its plane of existence, it blew right through that door, ran right through it. Our planes of existence were crossing at the time, so I could see it, but I couldn't see the door open because that door was on my plane of existence. But I heard the sound of it because the sound travels on a different wavelength, and so therefore I could hear it, but I couldn't see the door. And so that could be what happened here with the missing Douglas is that it went through that portal into another dimension and we could still hear some of that chatter for a limited time and then it was gone. So that's portals and vortices. And these are things that are using the Earth's energy. And we've been talking a lot lately about the Earth's energy grid, the telluric currents that run through the Earth. And a term that kind of gets thrown around a lot in this is ley lines. So we're gonna talk about the difference between the telluric currents and the ley lines in the Earth's energy grid, and what all these things are. So basically the grid is the map of the electromagnetic currents that are running through the Earth, and the telluric currents are basically what these things are. So a ley line is really a misused term. Really what it is is a geographical alignment of ancient sites like uh, ancient temples or sites of power like Stonehenge or uh, ancient churches, these sorts of things. And you look at the, the book, The Old Straight Track, and it was a recognition that these different sites are lining up all in a line. 
Now, they end up lined up like that because the ancients were following these to lure currents, to access that power, to do different things like access different states of consciousness or for healing powers. And so they would build their temples or their, uh, their hinges or churches or whatever on these sites to do these different things. And they ended up all lining up in a line, which is what we're recognizing today. Of course, one of the most noticeable ones, the Great Pyramids, of course, this is on the ley line, but it is absolutely accessing these Tellura currents. It is uh, on a crossing point of two lines, and there's a lot of people who speculate different things about what the pyramids may have been used for. We're not going to get into it, whether it was a power plan or some other sort of device, but it is a massive power center right there with the pyramids. They're like the epitome of what all of this is about. Now, I threw out the question at the beginning, was the lost civilization of Atlantis a giant portal? And I asked this question, just kind of doing my research lately and postulating these different ideas about portals and vortices and the Earth's energy and looking at ancient symbols. So you look around the different ancient cultures and a lot of them use the different swirl symbol. And I saw one of these out at Chaco Canyon this past November, but a lot of these ancient cultures have used this type of a symbol, the swirls or the concentric circles, to possibly signify portals or some people say stargates. Now, the legends of Atlantis as handed down to us from Plato and he got a lot of his source material back from Egypt. But the way Atlantis was mapped out from what we've been given were in these different concentric circles. So it makes me wonder if perhaps, now we know that the ancients knew about this type of energy. They were taking these giant stones, you know, granite blocks that are you know, more than half quartz. Quartz is something that can access this energy. Perhaps Atlantis being built the way it was with these giant blocks with, like the ancients were using perhaps it was accessing this on a massive scale, all of this energy tapping straight down into it. And of course, I had to run my crazy idea by somebody else too. So recently here on the Edge of the Rabbit Hole live stream show on the Edge of the Rabbit Hole channel, we had on the amazing Johnny Enoch. He's a researcher of esoterica, lost civilizations, consciousness, folklore, all different kinds of fantastic information. And one of my co-stars on the Travel Channel show, The Alaska Triangle knowledgeable, knowledgeable guy. And so I asked him this very question, and here was his response. You know, hypothetical question here, do you think it could be possible that perhaps Atlantis was a giant portal? I believe that, uh, well, first of all, that's a very good question and thank you for asking it. I think that Atlantis has been hypothesized to be a lot of things. Now we find an exact replica of this particular story that's on the wall uh, over at the Edfu Temple of Egypt. And what's really interesting about this, if you look at this seafaring people that are all on the wall, we see right above them that there is a serpent coming down from the heavens and destroying them, the replica of the story. Now, if the serpent represents energy, could it be that they were experimenting with a sort of geomagnetic energy using these fields and these grids we were talking about? and they were experimenting with these obelisks. Do I believe they had portals? Do I believe this was part of what we call Atlantis? Absolutely they did. In fact, we have it in plain sight, my friend. It says in these areas that these are stargates. So it's an interesting idea and knowing the way that the energy from these portals and vortices interacts with our world today without us even attempting to really tap into it like the ancient peoples did, we see the significant impact it has on us today between missing planes and ships and much, much more. So please check out our other videos on this type of phenomenon off to the side. I'm Mike Ricksecker. Until next time.